One of the greatest advancements in swift water rescue over the last 20 years has been the inclusion of an integrated harness into our life jackets. These harnesses give us the advantage of being able to be affixed to a line when we want to or when necessary, as well as the benefit of being able to get away from the line by opening up the quick release harness. There are a variety of ways that you can thread your harness. The way to thread the harness, giving it the most friction, is to go through the back of the triglide, the front of the triglide, and then through the plastic buckle. What that does is give us a considerable amount of, of grip strength and biting force in that buckle without putting much pressure on the plastic. The problem that some smaller people or lighter people might find is that when they release their buckle, that there's a considerable amount of friction before they can swim and break free from their jacket. In the event that that's the case, what those lighter, smaller people may consider doing is instead of weaving through both parts of the triglide, they could consider just weaving through one half of the triglide. Now, there's less friction to be able to safely escape from the rope. If you wanted to reduce the amount of friction, let's say if you were just rescuing a kayak and you wanted to be able to possibly get away from it very quickly, you may bypass the triglide and go straight through the plastic buckle. Although this is not recommended through the manufacturer, what it does do is this. It means if we're about to tow a kayak and potentially get, get pulled down through the next rapid, that on release of the buckle, that we can very easily or more likely dump that heavy canoe or kayak that we're towing and be able to paddle away from it. It's important that we practice with our harness threaded and we practice escaping from the harness. All you need to do is pull on the strap so that you release freely from the rope and be able to swim securely to shore. Depending on your size and weight, you may choose to, to use a combination of these different threading. What's most important is that you have good hands-on practical experience to figure out what's gonna work best for you in any given situation. When we're out on the river, sometimes we choose not to run certain rapids because we don't have a secure enough safety plan downstream. By having adequate safety downstream, such as live bait, that may then help us to decide uh, whether we're going to run a certain rapid or whether we're not. Live bait rescue is one of the big greatest advancements in swift water rescue in the last 20 years. This is a way that we can take a rescuer and have the benefit of them being able to physically go out and make contact with our subject, as well as having the benefit of them being tethered to shore. The basis of live bait rescue is to start by clipping our rescuer in on the ring of their jacket or over top of their strap using a locking gate carabiner. From there, we'll have an extension of rope over towards shore and the live bait rescuer should stand a distance upstream from their anchor point, approximately equivalent to how far out they may need to swim to be able to rescue their subject. This formula of distance away from shore of the subject and distance between the rescuer and the anchor point is a key to using live bait successfully. The anchoring skills that we've learned previously in our throw bagging section all apply the same way to live bait. In summary, live bait rescue is one of our most dynamic rescue techniques. It works very, very well because one of the things that we're able to do is take the responsibility away from our subject or victim and put more responsibility of the rescue on the rescuers. At the same point in time, we need to have a high level of expertise when we use live bait rescue because it does have an inherent amount of risk with us being, with our rescuer being affixed to a line and being out in fast moving water. Practice is essential. In review, the PFD's rescue harness can be threaded in various ways depending on your size and situation. Practice and familiarize yourself with releasing from the harness. This is very important. Pull either the excess strap or toggle to release from the harness. Live bait rescue is a method whereby a rescuer can be tethered to the shore and is able to go out and make physical contact with the subject. Downstream safety, such as live bait, can prevent possible accidents on the water. There will be more information on live bait rescue techniques coming in the next episode.